Your eyes are like the moon. Your smile is like the sun. Secret admirers who leave you poetic and sometimes disturbing messages from high school and beyond. Grab a blanket, turn off your lights for three stories from the soul. Mom's Secret Admirer Apparently, my mom had a stalker when she was younger and partially lived alone in her and my dad's shared apartment in Southern California in the 80s. She claimed that it actually started in high school, where she would open her locker and several hastily written letters would spill out, always signed with, Your Secret Admirer. The letters were pretty tame according to her, they usually contained cheesy attempts at poetry and occasionally mentioned how nice she smelled or something like that. The letter still made her understandably uncomfortable, considering that she was dating my dad at this point in time. She said she would just shrug it off though and didn't think much of it after she graduated. When she was 19, she married my dad and when she was 20, they both moved to California where my dad was stationed at the military base near Oceanside. My dad was usually away on call, so my mom spent a lot of time at home. That's when she started getting really creepy phone calls at night. Some pervert would call her and say that he knew she was alone and would make really disgusting comments about how he wanted to have sex with her and if she screamed for help, he'd smash her head in. Sometimes he'd just call and breathe or moan loudly into the receiver and laugh before he hung up. This went on for months until it got to the point where one day, when a stalker called her, my mom let out an ear-piercing scream and slammed the receiver against the counter to hopefully bust this fucker's eardrum. She did this the next several times he called until the calls became less and less and eventually stopped. My mother has told me all sorts of ridiculously creepy stories from when she and my dad lived in California, but honestly, this one still makes my skin crawl. She never did find out who this guy was or if he was connected to the secret admirer from high school. Secret Admirer Around three years ago, I worked in an office as an administrative assistant. All I really did was make coffee, photocopy documents, and answer the telephones. I was 20 years old at the time. One day, around five months into working there, I found a card on my desk after coming back from lunch break. I opened it, obviously. Inside, it said, Dear Sarah, I enjoy working with you. Love from question mark. It didn't freak me out and I found it kind of sweet that someone had sent me a card saying how much they enjoyed working with me. When I asked around the office, no one seemed to want to own up. I brushed it off. It wasn't a big deal at all to me at that point. Four days later, after coming back from my lunch break again, there were flowers left on my desk, but this time there was no card. Again, no one owned up and, to be honest, it didn't freak me out at all. I really didn't think anything of it. I was more intrigued and wondering who maybe had a thing for me in the office. I secretly hoped it was the really hot guy who worked three desks away from me. <laughs> at this point in my life, I was living between three addresses. One was my mom's house, one was my grandma's, and the other was a, was a friend's house that I went to when I got fed up with them both. I received a card in the mail one day, around two weeks after the flower incident. The card was a little creepy this time. Whoever had sent it had super glued jelly beans to the outside. They are my favorite candy. And inside it read, Dear Blondie, you're brilliant. This time it unnerved me a little as they obviously now know where I live. But still, I put it aside and got on with my life and didn't think too much of it. Three days later, another card appeared in the mail for me, but this time, it hadn't been stamped, so 
They must have hand delivered it, and they had delivered it to my grandma's address. This time the card was actually written with letters cut out of a newspaper, like you see those creepy stalker people doing in movies. It read, Dear Blondie, you have amazing legs. Remember to smile. Okay, now I was creeped out. Whoever it was must have known where I was staying to make sure I received the card. Was I being followed, I thought. Whoever this person was, they kept sending me cards. The cards became extra, extra creepy to the point where I would feel sick waking up in the morning and finding a card addressed to me. They had started drawing pictures of me in the cards. They drew me in situations I had been in recently, like they drew a picture of me sitting on a park bench or a picture of me sitting in a bar drinking a glass of wine. They weren't good drawings, but just incredibly creepy. I decided to go to the police as this person was clearly following me and knew where I was staying on what night and where to give these cards to. The police didn't really do much when I presented them with the 12 cards I had received, as obviously they didn't have any evidence on who it was and I also had no idea. They just told me I, if I received anything else, then to take it to them and they will log it for me or something. I took all the cards into work, I cried to my co-workers, I even stuck them on the notice board in the office with a long letter explaining that I would appreciate if the person, whoever it was, to please stop contacting me. I had meetings with my manager, I opened up to everyone about it, and I was told to take some time off work. I was allowed two weeks off. This went on for another five weeks when I received cards from this person literally every other day. The messages were becoming more and more creepy and sexual inside the cards, and I was becoming increasingly anxious and scared. I was even scared to be on my own at any time. It really affected me. My mom and grandma decided to install security cameras on their properties to try and catch this person out. Strangely, after this, my mom and grandma never received anything else from me. I stayed at my friend's house one night, and this person had some flowers delivered to me to her address. The flowers said the usual, Dear Blondie, blah blah blah. I managed to catch this person out this time though. As the flowers were from a florist, I frantically called them and asked them who sent these flowers as I'm being stalked. They couldn't give me that information, unfortunately. The only way that I could get them to give me that information was to get a police officer to go ask them. The police did and finally, I got some answers. The man who was stalking and obsessed with me worked in my office. He was a 63 year old single man who lived on his own. The police told me once they arrested him that on his personal computer he had over 100 of images of me that he had saved from Facebook. He also had a picture of me in his wallet. All that happened to this man, who stalked the shit out of me, was that he lost his job and he's never, under any circumstances, allowed to come in contact or come near me again. Secret Admirer Long time lurker on this thread First time poster This happened when I was 13 I am 25 now I had recently been given my first phone My Nokia 3310 And only gave my number to a few friends All was well for about 2 months And then I started getting strange calls Started off as silence on the other end Before I would hang up after a while, I decided it was a friend playing a stupid prank and would leave the phone going but leave my phone in a different room to make them waste their minutes. After a while, a guy started talking to me when I would answer. His voice was familiar, but I, I couldn't place it. He would tell me I was the most beautiful girl in the world and that he loved me and that he was my secret admirer. This continued for a few months and... I didn't think much of it, nor did I tell my mom. 
It was just some guy paying compliments to a 13-year-old girl with no self-esteem. So I was happy. It started getting creepy after two to three months when he would start complimenting me on my outfit, the exact one I was wearing, or he would say he loved what I had done with my hair. One day I thought maybe he had seen me prior to going home from school or when I had walked down the corner store and tested the theory and asked what I was doing right then and flipped the bird. He told me that that was not very polite and that I shouldn't flip someone like him off because you don't know what I might just do to you, my sweet. I freaked out and hightailed it back inside, closed the blinds and armed myself with a meat tenderizer. After a few more horrifying phone calls, I turned to my friends asking for advice. One of the boys said to admit love to him and go all commitment on him because guys don't like that. Another said to call the cops. Others told me to go to my mother. I listened to the first guy. As a young teen, I thought maybe if he was my age, he'd get scared off by the idea of a lifetime commitment. I thought it worked because I didn't hear from him for a long time. Now comes the messed up part. The call stopped coming in when the man who lived across the road from me was arrested for pedophilia. This is a man who is the father of two girls I was friends with and had my number. A man who when I went over to hang out with said daughters told my mom he didn't know where I was and hadn't seen me. This guy was arrested for watching a young girl in the shower through the window, but they found child pornography on his computer. Years later, while he was still in jail, I was told by his youngest daughter that he kept making phone calls around the time that I was being stalked, and that one night heard her mother and father fighting about how he should leave the poor girl alone. You're scaring her. She's only 13 for Christ's sakes. So creepy neighbor, let's not meet. <laughs>